Uh, I want to circle back to my questions from earlier, and you had listed off a bunch of, uh, of positions of people that Mr. Firth had said that um, were part of his, his uh, friend and relationship network. Are you able to tell me the names of any of those people? Uh, sure. So um, uh, I, th uh, um, I think we had, a, um, we had an agreement to table some of those names. Okay. But um, so from so Mr. Philip Johnston, who was uh, the CIO of uh, Transport Canada, he uh, actually approved the, 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 the pilot, but um, the COVID started, so we couldn't start. Um, Mark Bruyart, the CTO yeah. of, of Canada, and um, there's a long list of other individuals who are engaged with uh, with uh, right. with the team. I would sorry, quickly add to that. There is an individual only known referred to us uh, by his first name of Todd, who was an associate of Mr. First that worked at PSPC that he referred to as the person that would be in charge of the entire enterprise rollout of Butler and would essentially act as the sales agent for okay. that transaction for the entire enterprise rollout. Okay, and um, was uh, Kelly Belanger ever named as one of the people who was part of Mr. Firth's network? So we actually, we had a meeting with Min Duan and several directors general in December of 2019, and Kelly Belanger was present. As we were walking into that meeting, Firth had told us, oh, Kelly is one of my, like, I know her really well, she's really good, we work together. And um, was she the, uh, was, excuse me, was Miss Belanger the acting CIO of CBSA uh, later when you sent your whistleblower report? That is correct. Okay. You mentioned earlier, and, and Mr. Jenis asked about this, um, about how uh, these players had dirt on each other. Can you, uh, can you expand on that? Maybe just take a minute to expand on that? What does that mean? Um, well, um, we don't know exactly what kind of uh, compromising material they, they have, but I assume when for example, when a resume is being forged and is submitted as part of a TA, and when a contracting authority signs a task authorization that has a forged resume there, that's something that that contracting authority is basically being, could be used for uh, extortion. On the other end of it, if, let's say, Mr. Firth uh, conducts, you know, um, engages in, 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 in similar conduct, so let's say forges a resume, and submit it and get gets caught, then the contracting authority would have some compromising material on Mr. Firth that then could you know could direct Mr. Firth to do other criminal activities. Obviously, the prospect of um, individuals collecting compromat about um, people who presumably all have government security clearances is concerning in in the context of these apps which have. Um, uh, access to Canadians' uh, personal and, and private, their medical information, particularly in an age where we're dealing with foreign interference by, by state actors. Surely if um, the mutually assured destruction, as you described it, could be used with respect to individuals who are engaged in uh, alleged criminality, it could be used by foreign state actors to, um, to extract access to or um, uh, extract the information uh, about Canadians or, or to gain access to our networks. Would that, be, would that be fair to say? That would be very accurate. And um, an individual who doesn't, um, an individual who, who's basically engaged in conduct that is criminal is the perfect target for any sort of um, foreign interference operation. And, you know, when, when um, bad actors try to recruit, they won't recruit, you know, a normal public servant. They go to some someone with authority, someone like a contracting authority who has access to systems, to, um, to information, to data, and then that individual would be the perfect target for, uh, to be recruited. Okay. Uh, thanks very much.